Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night. It's the home of the LSU Tigers. It is known as Death Valley. More than 93,000 expected to gather to watch this man play football. Tim Tebow shaking hands with his teammates about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Gets a hug from his head coach, Urban Meyer, who points out the location of the family. His mom, Pam, his father, Bob, and the other members of the Tebow family. Meanwhile, arriving in slightly more formal fashion, Les Miles and the Tigers of LSU. CBS is called Death Valley on a Saturday night. No scene quite like it in college football. And that is especially the case when the game features the top ranked Florida Gators and the four seated Tigers of LSU. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. On its own merits, this game was destined to attract a lot of attention, but the anticipation was ratcheted up because the will he or won't he status of Tim Tebow. It was two weeks ago tonight, third quarter against Kentucky, a clean but hard hit from Taylor Wyndham, concussion for Tim Tebow, the Florida quarterback. He's been medically cleared a moment ago. Tracy with Urban Meyer. Coach, now that Tim has been medically cleared to play, will we see him start? Yeah, Tim's going to start the game tonight. Any changes offensively to protect him? Oh, uh, we're always going to try to protect him. We'll probably do some more things uh, more than usual to protect tonight. But he's going to play and he's ready to go. He's been cleared 100% ready. What if he's not playing well? Will you make the switch? No, uh, Tim's our quarterback at four. We'll try to maybe get John in the game, but Tim's our quarterback. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Tracy, thank you. John refers to John Brantley. Now, you spent a lot of time down on the field. Are we going to see the real Tim Tebow tonight? Uh, I know we will. Um, now, the only way to corral this guy, because he only knows one way to play, is with the play calls. When you go down there and watch him on the sideline, he's just like this. I mean, he plays with emotion. It's the only way he knows how to play. I think Urban Meyer tipped his hand by saying, we will manage the game from the press box and with the calls. Now, I went down on the field. I was going to ask him how he was feeling. He asked me how I was feeling. I said, I'm doing OK. So that's Tim Tebow. But this is a guy that has one way to play up the middle. But I think Urban Meyer tipped his hand. We may see Brantley. We'll see a little different look. Now, what about the other side of the ball for LSU? Besides Florida, the team that has the most experience in big games is LSU. And if you look at them, they're built to handle the spread because their back seven on defense athletically is as good as anyone in the country. There's some good ones, but this team has athletes at the linebackers, in the secondary, at corner, at safety. They have playmakers all over the field in the back seven. They can do it against the spread. And we're not that far away from kickoff. You can see the crowd is filled in. We expect a dandy. Back with more and Mike the Tiger after this. Undefeated top ranked Florida against undefeated fourth seeded LSU. And here come the Tigers. Last defeat here on a Saturday night, Alabama, seven years ago. Two years ago, these two teams staged a game for the ages, Florida Gators. They've won 14 straight. That is the longest win streak 
in the country. Tim Tebow will start and will return. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. Coca-Cola Zero. New York Life. And by LG. There's a snap. At the distance. Tebow with the football. Right hand. Tebow is down. Tebow is not moving. Throws a deep caught. Touchdown to the 10 of the 5. He's all alone. Touchdown, Gators. Touchdown. Touchdown. Breaks the tackle. 10, 5, touchdown. Tigers stopped him. Still on his feet. Still going. 15, 10, 5. He takes it. The distance. National Champions 2008, the Gators of Florida. National Champions 2007, the Tigers of LSU. National Champions 2006, the Gators of Florida. They're both ranked in the top five. There's a lot to like about this game. This game and all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS High Definition. I don't want to say the scene is unbelievable, but I understand LSU just got three more commitments during the free game here. <laughs> uh, chance of rain tonight, but it's held off almost all day. 70 degrees. It is a perfect football evening in Red Stick. Florida leads the series by six. They won big in Gainesville last year, and you see the note at the bottom. The last three winners have been national champions. On your left, Trendon Holiday, two big returns last week in the win over Georgia on the road. The other man back is Ron Brooks. Holiday returns of 40 and 49 last week. Here's Caleb Sturgis, number 19, with the kickoff. Holiday at the five. Out to the 29-yard line. And here comes Jordan Jefferson, starting only his second game at home at night. All the talk about Tim Tebow. The biggest difference in this game than a year ago right now is Jordan Jefferson. Last year, LSU played around their quarterback. This year, their quarterback can make plays. He's a weapon. It was Jarrett Lee. A year ago, he was benched the last two games. Jefferson took over, but this is only his second start at home. Sophomore, Destrahan, Louisiana. Fine rollout passer, more so than in the pocket. But he'll throw from the pocket now, maybe. Two yards to the 31. Omar Hunter, number 99. Now let's uh, check the starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. Spikes. Black, DeRozic, T-Bob, Bear, Lyle Hitt, and Barksdale up front. It's LaFell and Tolliver, the wideouts. They're huge. Charles Scott, the running back off of a big game. And Trendon Holiday is the deep back right behind Jordan Jefferson. Double tight end set. Option. Holiday with a pitch. Cunningham with a good job defensively. And they still pick up about two. Florida defensively ranked number one in the country Dunlap Hunter Howard and Cunningham up front the linebackers are Jones spikes in the middle All-American and Stamper and the secondary Jenkins in black and Hill and Joe Hayden Scott the featured running back it's third down and four. Jefferson flushed, goes right. A.J. Jones, that leaves a man open. It's Scott, 
First down, LSU. Well, that time, the Florida defense tried to put pressure the first time. Spikes comes up the middle right there to the inside, flushes him out of it, and then A.J. Jones, who has the running back, Scott, thinks he has a chance to clean up on the sack, leaves his man, and Jordan Jefferson finds Scott's man on that play. Scott. Hand off, lead block left side by Stampley, and Scott picks up uh, one, maybe two. Let's... Um, try to settle down here the way I think LSU is trying to settle down. They really believe that that first quarter buzz from Florida it gets a lot of teams. It destroyed Kentucky last week. They want to calmly get through this first quarter and not make any early mistake. A second down and nine here. Four-man rush. LaFell with a catch, number one. Brandon LaFell at 6 3 206. You know, one of the funny things about these two teams is they got all these five star recruits. Well, Brandon LaFell was not a five star recruit. He was like a two or a three star recruit. Found his way. The LSU staff liked him, and he's turned in to be one of the great receivers in this league. That was a gain of eight, second down, third down, and two. Four-man rush, Jefferson. He's really good on the roll. Fires it. Diving try. Is it caught? No. Hayden defending Terrence Tolliver. Well, Jordan Jefferson was sacked last week six times by Georgia. This week already he's been flushed out of the pocket twice. Now Florida's corners believe they can cover anyone. They don't care how tall they are, how fast they are. When you look at the Florida corners, Joe Hayden, Janoris Jenkins, they say, I'll take them. I'll take them all over the field. Josh Jasper is going to come on. And he is the pooch punter. Look at Brandon James. We've talked so many years about his great punt returning ability. He's got four return for touchdowns, but his longest return this season is six yards. And here's why Jasper was called upon to punt. How about that? 39 yards at the seven. When we come back, Timothy Tebow will be at quarterback. Gator lately. Certainly not the last 14 games. Rainey and Demps are both on the field. And Florida opens with five wide from their own seven. Question is, do you get them hit early or do you try to keep them away from contact? Rainey and Demps alongside Tebow. There's the dive play and they hand it left side. Chris Rainey, gang tackle. They're going for the ball. Tackle made by Pep Levingston. And the uh, Florida offense. Tebow at quarterback up front. Johnson, Wilson, Pouncey, and Pouncey, the twins. Marcus Gilbert at right tackle. Cooper, Deontay Thompson, missed the last two with injuries. Demps, Hernandez, and David Nelson. Again, five wide on second down. Delay. I think someone moved before this snap. Full, Full start. Number 57 on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Also, Vern, it looks like the switch by Florida last week is going to stand tonight. Mike Pouncey has gone over to left guard in place of Carl Johnson, and Maurice Hurt is playing right guard, number 74. Steve Adazio, the offensive coordinator, started that offensive line two weeks ago against Kentucky. See the play clock at two. Can he get it snapped? No. I'll no. You, I'll tell you what happened there. He would have got it snapped off, but he dropped his mouthpiece. And he had to bend down to pick up his mouthpiece, and it blew the 30-second clock. 
I'm quite a ways away, but I'm pretty sure that he, his mouth guard came out. There I see him put it in. Watch him, he's calling out the plays, calling out the plays. Oh, he dropped the mouthpiece, and he had to put it in, and he didn't have time to regroup. I saw Thad Mata, the Ohio State coach, basketball, drop his gum, put it, put it right back in his mouth. <laughs> Just before the uh, flag was thrown, here's Urban Meyer. Saw that uh, play clock evaporating, and he called timeout. So, as we get back to live action, it is second down, 11. Demps split way out wide to the left. And again, an empty backfield with Tebow. Brandon James in the slot to the right. The option. Tebow decides, to, now he pitches. How about that? And this is Hernandez, the tight end who gets around the corner and picks up 16. Well, this was actually the going to be the shovel pass, but it was taken away by LSU. Watch this. The ball was going to try to go inside here. Hernandez backs up as a safety bell, and Tebow does a perfect job. Watch, it's going to go inside. Taken away, and then Tebow makes the second level. He doesn't run and makes the pitch. That's a wonderful job by the quarterback. And a first down, Florida. LSU threatens a blitz, and they come with a run blitz, and there's the dive play, the option, and uh, a gain of a couple. Kelvin Shepard, number 11, the middle linebacker, led the defensive effort that time. Let's check this LSU defense. Alem, Al Woods, Charles Alexander turned 24 years of age yesterday, and Levingston up front. Coleman, Shepard, and Perry Riley are the linebackers, and the secondary features Chad Jones, also, Hawkins, Taylor, and Patrick Peterson, who is a wonderfully gifted cornerback. Left side. Here's Demps. He can uh -oh. run. Boy, can he motor. Brandon Taylor saved a bunch. And there's a bobbled ball. A gain of 25. Now, this is the dive play off the option. But if I'm an LSU fan, I'm wondering, what are you doing, defense? Let's play the dive before Florida deciding whether Florida will ever run the guy. I mean, they might not run Tebow. It's probably a declared handoff all the way. And if I'm LSU, I'm playing the dive first and see if the Florida offense is willing to get Tebow hit on the running game. That 25-yard gain gives Florida first down. Here's Tebow backing up. He's nailed on this one, but he completes the pass at the LSU 42. So there is the first real contact of the ball game. Comes from the corner blitz to the right side of the screen. Tebow's going to do it. And one thing, though, on this one is, and it's not the hit that they're worried about. He sees it coming, good catch here, but he did bang his head on the ground after it. We should take one more look. That's how it happened before on the lake. He did bang his head on the ground. Second and two, scoreless first quarter here in Baton Rouge. See, another dive. Yes. So you got to play the dive. And you think it's predetermined? Well, yes, now I do. I think Florida's going to say, we're going to dive the ball, make it look like the triple option. We're going to call it because if you give Tim the option, you're going to keep it. So we're going to determine some dive plays early. We're going to check out how the LSU's defense is going to play the option, and then we'll see what we want to do later. Look at Florida offensively, just under 60% LSU defense. Not terrific. Third and short. This is usually Tebow time. Let's see if there's a change up here. Usually he's a battering ram here. Fullback goes left. Dive play. Yep. Scored different. through. Absolutely. First down at the 35. It's Emmanuel Moody, Moody. number 21. Started his career at Southern Cal. Uh, Gary, you thought it worthwhile to take another look. Yeah, at the I mean, this hit. is a you know a worrisome thing. This is how the concussion happened before. Not the initial hit, but the hit and then the re a head hitting the grass, not violently, 
like the knee last time, but that's one that I'm sure the Florida doctors are concerned about. First down and 10. Again, it's Demps and Rainey in the backfield. Centurions to Tebow. And another Moody another breaks time. out. Yep. Emmanuel Moody, nifty run. Moody. Flag down on this one, though. It's back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think they're going to get. I don't know if LSU lined up offsides on the play. Offsides on the defense, number 11. That penalty has been refused. The result of the play is a first down. Kelvin Shepard, who was blitzing on the play, got in the neutral zone. Number 11. Right there, he anticipates. Well, I guess it wasn't number 11, was it? Some they let us into number 11, but it wasn't him. It is a first down and 10. Rick Burgess is on as a fullback, number 48. He's to the left. Here's Tebow at the line. Tebow wants to throw it. Then as he lets it go, it's a one hopper, incomplete. Well, at the feet of his intended receiver, Perry Riley, number 56, was defending. And that's what I'm talking about, the LSU speed in the back seven. You know, I, last year I questioned their linebacker play. But Perry Riley and Harry Coleman and Jacob Katera and Kelvin Shepard have really come on now. And those three, along with the back four, are really SEC as good as you can get it. Second and ten. Whoa. That's Al Woods who came across the neutral zone. We'll see if uh, he was induced to make that action. Five on the defense. Number 97 at penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Now take a look at this, Gary. It, it might surprise some folks. Florida, 308 yards in four games, average. Well, they had a couple, you know, games they did. that they should. But the Kentucky performance was pretty darn good because Kentucky loaded the box on them. This drive has to really be tough to taste for the LSU defense. Tebow has not carried the ball yet, and they're driving it down the field. Started back at the seven. Here's the toss to Dents going left. Nice pursuit by Harry Coleman. And a flag is down. Coleman, number 24, strong safety move to the weak side linebacker this year. And Raven Taylor being tackled. There's a flag in the play. Offside. Number 84 on the defense. That penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Result of the penalty is the first down. That is Raheem Alem. That, that means he must have been lined up in the neutral zone again. That's the second penalty. He's way up here, right there. My telestrator's a little touchy here for this big game today. I can't even make circles so far. Must be nervous. The telestrator. <laughs> Death Valley for telestrators, too. I'm drawing them. They just ain't going. There. Exactly. <laughs> First down and 10. Another time out. Urban was calling. And Tebow carries for the first time. Urban, Picks up maybe one or two. Urban was trying to call timeout again on that play, and the official didn't see him this time. <laughs> Watch on the left upper side of your screen. Watch Urban Meyer come in and try to signal timeout here. See that? He's coming in and yell it. The official says no. Eight runs, two passes. Deontay Thompson is wide to the left. He's got a lot of speed. It's there at the 13-yard line. So here's Rainey going left, and Brandon Taylor nails him at the knees. Taylor, whose older brother Curtis was a starting defensive back at LSU last year. 
Well, it's, it's not hard to see the flow of this defense and the way that they can run with Demps and Rainey. A lot of teams just can't match Demps and Rainey. This secondary and back seven for LSU can. The difference is the LSU front four is getting knocked off the ball so far. Third and eight. Tebow has to freelance down to P11. It'll be fourth down. Perry Riley with some pressure, and Peterson got there, Patrick Peterson, to make the tackle. Fourth down. Well, that time, the LSU secondary did a great job, took away Tebow's first and second throw. Tim tries to come out of it, and the speed in that secondary, Peterson, one of the great corners in the country, just ran him right down. Successful drive for Florida helped. Remember, they were backed up early with the penalties and then helped with a couple penalties. 28-yard effort by Caleb Sturgis. He's a perfect 5-for-5 five five this year, and he's now 6-for-6 six six out of Chez Henry's hole. Steve Adazio, the offensive coordinator, chatting with his quarterback. Tebow went down hard on that one. And this one, Florida leads by three. Eight, NFL on CBS, a doubleheader tomorrow. Four games in the early slot, Oakland and New York the lead. And at 4.15, the Patriots visit the undefeated Denver Broncos. Jim Nance, Phil Sims will be there. It was snowing in Denver this afternoon. And it all begins with JV and the quartet. The NFL today presented by Southwest Airlines at 12 noon Eastern time tomorrow. Who do you like in that Oakland, uh, New York Giant game? <laughs> <laughs> Oakland. Yeah. Not. Caleb Sturgis. And Holiday backs up. Only one. Well, this is the second touchback of the season for Sturgis. First down and 10 at the 20. It does remind you a bit uh, with that kickoff into the end zone, the advantage of that celebration penalty, doesn't it, oh Georgia last gosh, week? Yes. I mean, you know, that, that's a, a big, big, huge difference. Every, you know, everyone feels terrible about that. You know, including the guy who called it, everybody feels bad about that. Well, that was the excessive celebration on A.J. Green in the end zone after Georgia had taken the lead against LSU. And then just to complicate matters, they called a makeup call. There's Tolliver. Hit at the 25. Keelan Williams, number five. Well, if you look at this LSU offense, I know they want to run the ball at this Florida defense, but a lot of teams want to run the ball at them. When you turn the tape on, Florida's front seven just refuses to be blocked. They just get off blocks better than any team in the country. There's the old-fashioned eye, and the lead block, and Scott scampers through across the 35 and out to the 38. Well, Les Miles said, this is my best, most powerful offensive line I've had since I've been here. And this time, they run right, old eye formation, isolation, and James Stampley, the fullback, fits up perfectly, and they gash him for an old-fashioned Les Miles iso play. Trendon Holiday on the field, wide to the right side. Here's Jefferson back. Screen pass, left side, inside. And it's stopped for a gain of one. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. All right, Vern, Dan Hawkins is going to take over after a Colt McCoy fumble. That's right, the other Heisman frontrunner, Colt McCoy, fumbled it. And look at this, to Ryer Gear for a touchdown, and Texas has just come back to score, and it's now 14 to 9, pending the extra point. But right now, the Buffalo's giving them all they want. Back to you, Vern. All right, Tim, here's a handoff deep again, and it's Keelan Williams, number five. That's going to bring up 
A third down at the 42 yard line. Ryan Stamper with the tackle. Three nothing as we're under two minutes remaining in the first quarter. RJ Jackson, number 28 on the field. He's uh, the second man in top of the screen to the right side. On third down. Stunts Jefferson caught by LaFell, but short of the first down at the 47 yard line. I tell you, it's just a defensive zone that time that LaFell goes out there. You know, you'd like him to get seven yards. He pulls up at six yards. Now, a good throw, I think he would have been able to turn around and pick up the first down, but two straight passes by Jordan Jefferson were high on the wide receiver screen and on that one right there on third down, and it cost him a first down on both for the combination of the two throws. That puts Brandon James back at the 15-yard line, and Derek Helton, who is the, the regular punter for this unit, saw Jasper last time because they were inside the 50. No, my, he may not be the regular punter for long. Well, you want to know why Brandon James had a small average? Because so many teams are directional and angle oh, punting. Oh, but look what happens. You shank it a little bit, and you really get a bad result. 18 yards. 18 yards, 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tim Tebow started the game. His team leads by three. Watch fantasy football today to get the last minute news and analysis you need to set up your fantasy league lineup live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern only on CBSSports.com. Final one minute of the first quarter on a night in October with Tim Tebow medically cleared at noon today sometime shortly after that Urban Meyer and the staff deciding yes he will play and start. And he's had a couple of uh, more than noticeable hits so far. First down and 10. Brandon James starts right, goes left, and loses three yards. Well, we were all waiting for those early hits, and he's uh, received a couple. Well, you're not going to run the spread option offense and not get hit if you're a quarterback. It just goes with the territory. I do think that so far the strategy has to bring to bring him along a little slowly, which I think is smart. I mean, against Kentucky just a week ago, before he got hurt, and that was a late third quarter, yes. he had rushed the ball 24 times in that game. Okay, now, he had three sacks, but that means he was called for 21 runs. I'd be surprised if he approaches that number in this football game. There is a player down. It's the uh, fine defensive lineman, Drake Nevis. And so as the medical staff tends to him, we'll uh, step aside. Three nothing, Florida. Back at Baton Rouge, Drake Nevis able to walk off without assistance, getting some uh, attention on the bench. After the loss on the tackle by Nevis of uh, Brandon James, it's second down. 36 seconds remaining, opening quarter. And there's the handoff on the dive play yet again. A flag is down over uh, in front of the Florida bench. Al Woods with the tackle. Perry Riley was the second man through as Rainey made the tap of the run. You know, it's so noisy, and when you go shotgun, one of the advantages of silent count is the center can tip off his lineman by turning his head to get a little timing. See that little timing move by the center? That kind of negates the crowd noise because it's all silent count for Florida, but you'll see throughout the game, Pouncey Mar Marquise turn his head like that now. You know, if I'm LSU, I'm sure they've seen this on tape. If I've seen it, they've seen it. So he must try, I think, a few times in this game, turn it and not snap it. See, the Florida has outscored its opponents 58 to 6. That is the third offside penalty against LSU. Now three men down. Oh, they got Hernandez open, and he's got a first down up at the 48-yard line. 
Nice little ball handling by uh, Tebow. Well, if you don't think Tebow can move a team with his arm, I think I suggest you call Nick Saban at Alabama or turn on the fourth quarter of that SEC championship game where Nick had Florida exactly where he wanted him and Tebow carried him on his back with his passing arm. Is one of the most talented That's the end of the first quarter here in Baton Rouge with our score. Three nothing. We'll return to Tiger Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. No playoffs tonight. Find out when the Phils return to the field after the game. Chad Jones, outstanding safety, number three, also a baseball player for LSU, the national champions. And a moment ago, they retired the jersey of another defensive back and a running back, Tommy Casanova. That's him on the left. He's now an ophthalmologist in Crowley, Louisiana, three-time All-American, 69, 70, and 71. And he wore number 37. Pretty good number. I knew a guy named Bill Walker who honored that number. First down and 10. Second quarter, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wilson from Baton Rouge. Moody, quick opener on the left side, and he's down to the 45-yard line. Uh, I think I know what they're trying to do, Gary. And it's like, <laughs> let's try the dive play. And a dive play is working. Um, you know, you look at this and you say, you know, both teams, I, I think, came out a little nervous in this football game, but, you know, the penalties early in the game. But Florida's been able to march the ball. But I don't think LSU's concerned. Remember last year, it was 20 to nothing in this game before they made their first first down. On first down. Dive again. Yes. Demps was the uh, running back. Yeah, we're going to get another block, another flag downfield this time. Wow. Looks like uh, from the reaction on the bench, they believe it's going to go against LSU, the Florida guys. Well, you, you can definitely see watching this game that these dive plays are called, not red. Personal foul. Face mask. Number three on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Carries an automatic first down. Well, Riley Cooper was blocking him downfield, and one of the things Urban Meyer told us is the light's gone on for Riley Cooper, and he's the best downfield blocker we have as a receiver. Now, Cooper put his hands out there first, and then Chad Jones reacted to it, and Byrne, have been doing it a long time. Who gets called? The guy who reacts. Oh, the, yeah, the second guy, the guy of course. Of course. And so, another penalty on LSU, and Tebow and the uh, Gators have it at the 29-yard line, leading by three. Hmm, dive play. Greg Luganis is going to show up here pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can talk about all the speed and all the spread and all the Tebow and all these sprinters, but this offensive line, when you talk to Urban, you talk to Steve Adazio, their offensive coordinator, it's these offensive linemen that they say are physical and as physical an offensive line as there is in college football. Mike Pouncey again the left guard and that more than anything is to help Carl Johnson at left tackle. That's why they made the move to help him mentally. And James Wilson is on that line now. Mo Hurt is out. Here's Demps. Cuts inside and a fine tackle by Pep Levingston number 95 with help from Brandon Taylor and another flag has been thrown. Taylor. Boy, if LSU lined up in the neutral zone again. <laughs> wow. I, I, I got to believe this one is something different. All sides. Hey, oh, my the man. Defense. Gosh. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. You play second down. It's Raheem Alem, Good number 84 his again. Second one. Puts his hand down. You can see he's right on the line. He's trying to crowd the line. And as he puts his hand down, he was right at the down the yard line for where the ball was placed, and he gets called. And, you know, I talked about in the open all the big game experience for LSU. 
They're not showing it. That's a lot of penalties to start. That's four offsides penalties. Tebow pulls up, fires Hernandez, who fumbles the ball. Did he catch it? No, it's ruled incomplete. Would have been nice, I think, for Hernandez to slow down in the hole this time for his quarterback. There was a hole. Now watch the hole. will come right about in the on the just past the yard line. If he could stop, if he could stop it right about there, that's where he could have just shut down. But he overruns the hole. I think Tebow threw it where it should have gone, and Hernandez ran past it. Third and three. Normally, this is Tebow time. It's a dive play. And it's going to be fourth down. They did not get. Gary, is this at all a part of what you mentioned at the oh, beginning yeah. Oh, yeah. of managing Tebow? Absolutely. And I think it's smart. You know, there's really, you got to get him used to the water. I mean, you know, this game, the water, you know, it's, you know, 60, 55 degree water. It's cold. You got to get him in there and used to it. <laughs> But that, that, again, is another one of those predetermined dive plays. It looks like the option, but it's not the option. Now, look at Steve Adazio is, is looking at Urban Meyer and says, what do you want to do? I can't keep running these dives all day. Sooner or later, they're going to go for the dive. This one from 38 yards out. Time has called by Florida. That's their second. So Urban Meyer's bunch has one timeout remaining, and we've still got 12.08 to go. Before halftime. How in the world can you keep calling those offside penalties? Come on! We're back live. How about this? Two years ago, LSU five for five on fourth downs. During the timeout, Urban Meyer changed his mind. It's fourth and two, and Tebow's going to get the snap. And a reverse in trouble. Oh, he got around the corner, but I don't think he got enough. Brandon James, Perry Riley was the first one there. This is, again, exactly what I talked about. LSU can run with Florida. Not a lot of teams can. Look at Alem run with him. Look at Perry Riley run with it. And look at Chad Jones run with him. Three athletes that can match up, and not a lot of teams can do that. That play against 99% of the teams in college football is successful. One of the most memorable elements of that classic played here two years ago was Les Miles' decision to go for first down on fourth down five times. They were five of five. And in this game, Florida comes up short by a yard. Ball goes over, three nothing. You know, when you were when we went to break and Les Miles was working the official, he's working him for the next one. He knows that those were proper calls. He wasn't arguing with those calls. He was doing basketball coach. He wants the next one. First down ten. By formation, Jefferson under center. The center is T. Bob Abair. Take the reverse and hand it off at left tackle. Another look at that uh, hit on Brandon James, Gary. And look at Riley laid out. Look at Chad Jones lay out on that play. I mean, you talk to the LSU coaches and you say, you know what? I'll tell you, Kelvin Shepard looks good. Chad Jones looks good. And they go, Perry Riley looks good. Talking to John Chavis yesterday, the defensive coordinator who spent most of his career at Tennessee, and he specifically mentioned how well Perry Riley is playing right now. Left side. That should be enough to move the chain and gives us a moment to spend with Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, Michigan's uh, Leading rusher is out with a concussion, Carlos Brown. That means Brandon Miner is going to be called upon, and that's the first rushing touchdown given up by the Hawkeyes in 34 quarters. 14 to 10, Michigan. Back to you. All right, it's 3 0 here and a first down 10 LSU with 11 minutes to go in the uh, first half of play. Jefferson on the last carry.
Play fake. Jefferson looks deep. He's got a man open. It's LaFell. Marky Anderson, number 14, was trailing, but a little crossing pattern, and LaFell picks up 26 yards. Well, it was outside the leverage that time by Anderson, the bottom of the screen right here. Marky Anderson has got LaFell right there. He's outside of him to begin with, and he can never catch up. It's a great call by Gary Croton. Offensive coordinator, he spotted the third Florida corner on his number one receiver, and he went right at him. After the 26-yard pickup, first down and 10 at the 43-yard line. Corner blitz threatened. They're coming. Ball carrier Scott goes the other way. And Scott gets inside the 40. Saturday night in Death Valley at Tiger Stadium. We expect a crowd of better than... 93,000. We could have the all time largest crowd ever here. And currently, a 3 0 game. Florida took it 13 plays, had to settle for a 28 yard field goal from Caleb Sturgis. If you did just join us, they had the ball in position for another field goal, opted to go for a first down on fourth and two, and came up short. And now, LSU moving the ball after that 26 yard game. Jefferson looks right nobody there pulls it up nice one inside the 35 34 what did I tell you the biggest difference from a year ago to this year in this football game is not whether Tebow is healthy or not it's that LSU has a quarterback that they feel could do a lot of different things Jared Lee last year, you know, a tough position for him. He shouldn't have been playing, and it just snowballed on him. It started in this game, you know, the interception that Spikes had, and it just snowballed. And this year, you can see that Jefferson is being managed. They're not allowing him to lose the game before he can win the game late. Double tight end, Scott and Duga. Oh, and course. here's Scott. Oh, I don't know if he got enough. That's yeah. Wow. That didn't look right. It was a short corner to the outside, no tight end. And that had a short corner to the left side. And right from the left side, the linebacker comes and Scott makes the play. Well, here's familiar territory, Gary, for LSU. Fourth and a yard. Well, they didn't make it last week. They're this 0 for 5 this year, and they do have a first down here, Jefferson. So the tradition continues. You know, everybody talks about the Tennessee. Another flag down here, by the way. Ah. We have a Bush push here? Nah, I don't think so. Charles Scott comes in there. That one was made. You think? <laughs> Let's talk about the Tennessee-Florida game for just a second. Everybody says the one thing out of that game was that Tennessee had a way to play the spread. That's not what I took out of it. After the play was over with. Personal foul. Number eight on the defense, unnecessary weapon. A penalty is 15 yards from the succeeding spot. First down. What did I say? Les Miles wanted the next call. Personal foul. He wanted those officials looking at the Florida guys with their eyes. Right in the middle of this thing, number eight, Carlos Dunlap, right there. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, just a little tap right there, and that's all it was. The official said, I've called one the other way. I'm going to call one this way. Carlos Dunlap guilty of the foul, and Keelan Williams is on the field now. This the most uh, serious threat posed offensively by LSU in the ballgame. Option left. Jefferson pitch. Keelan uh -uh. Williams uh -uh. can't get around the corner. Nice play by Ryan Stamper, number 41. And I thought we might have another flag. But I'll tell you, don't. Joe, I, I, this guy always amazes me when I watch him play. Joe Hayden, just a wisp of a football player, great cover guy, but he sticks his nose. He's been sticking his nose in tackles since he played as a true freshman. He never backs up. He is a warrior at corner. Now a junior out of Fort Washington, Maryland, recruited as an athlete. He's a high school quarterback. Yep. It was a flag. I, I didn't get that one. I thought the momentum of Joe Hayden threw him into the sideline. Right? Let's see what happens here. It's going to come right at us. 
Nice job, option, still running. He makes the play. See, the momentum being pushed from behind on the play might have been it, or did he get a face mask? I'm not sure exactly. Nor do we know exactly against whom it was called. It is a first down at the 10 yard line. Option, pitch. Keelan Williams to the eight yard line. Joe Hayden again and A.J. Jones. Now, we've been looking and looking because we just want our fans to see it. Maybe it was Brandon Spikes, number 51. Let's take another look on this thing. Coming in, coming, oh yes, Brandon Spikes, cheap shot on number 80 that time. Terrence Tolliver at the end of the play, an unnecessary hit on a defenseless player. That was a good call by the officials. Second and goal. LSU trying to grab the lead in this ball game. Here's Jefferson. Charles Scott alongside. Scott gets the handoff. Drives down inside the five to the two. I've tried two or three times to tell this story about Tennessee as we watch this run inside. What I took out of the Tennessee tape, and I think people who play Florida will take out it is, you just can't call a run against the Florida defense. You have to commit to the run to make it successful against the Florida defense. You're not going to gain. It's almost like an NFL defense. You're not going to gain every play. You just have to call it and call it and call it, and eventually you'll start to make those six-yard gains, eight-yard gains, and move the chains. 11th play of this drive. Scott is... The running back he had two touchdowns last week and he's going to have time to think about this because time has been called by LSU. Our coverage continues after this message and the word from your local station. The swine flu threat grows the local students with H1N1 after the game. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. T. Bob Abair, the center, and Josh Dorosik, the guard. Watch this. These two guys double team and they catch. Brandon spikes inside. Now it's never pretty, but you got to earn the yards against this Florida defense, and that's the commitment that Les Miles says he will have to the run game. It's hand to hand combat when you run the ball against these guys. And as we go back down to the field, it's third and goal. And look at this. They've not trailed this year. Fourth quarter against Alabama in the SEC title game. Three tight ends. Scott is the deep back. He had two touchdowns in the win last week at Georgia. 18 touchdowns a year ago. That's Dixon, the tight end, number 18. Scott, whoa, with the extra effort, the spin move, he still did not get in. Yeah, now what do you do on fourth down? It's fourth down less, and it's been two years since Jacob Hester's played here. That's what I was thinking. You call Jacob Hester. Right, well, they didn't have him last year either. Uh, you got a number 18 in there. It's Dixon, the tight end. Yeah, they, it, it, They're going to go apparently you know what? for the field. That offensive line didn't earn an opportunity to go in on fourth down. The Florida front blew him up, and I think Les said, no way. If you'd have shown me something and got it down to the six-inch line, I might have called it, but they got blown up on the play. So Derek Helton will hold Josh Jasper will kick it the equivalent of an extra point distance it's 18 yards and the kick is up and good and we are tied tied with five minutes and 16 seconds to go in the second quarter Florida three Tigers three. Beautiful night in Baton Rouge, and time to cue the duck. The Aflac trivia question. When was the last meeting between two top five teams in Tigers Stadium? It's only happened once before. And it was, uh, well, let me, I remember it. <laughs> I may be the only one in this booth. No, because I, I helped. I helped do the question so oh, I actually I'm, I'm taking a little bit of ownership on this one myself you're suggesting you weren't around when that game was played? 
Well, you got a I, I was around. Okay, I just good. don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Josh Jasper will kick off. Brandon James, who has a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. He's been uh, held in check with punt returns, but one kickoff return this season. And this one is boom. Wow. My goodness. Check the helium content. Well, penalties have played a huge part of this game, but those two personal fouls by Florida, that, that really hurt them on that drive. And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, speaking of penalties, guys, Les Miles and defensive coordinator John Chavis have been going crazy on the officials because of those offsides calls. Florida's center is moving his head, and that's exactly what Chavis told his line. He went over to them. He says, the next time the center does that, I want you to hit him, not hard, but do it, and we're going to get those calls stopped, guys. <laughs> All right. I think last year, Pouncey was using his arm to signify the pre-snap. This year he's using the head. Saw John Chavis first year as a defensive coordinator here. Here's Tebow stepping back. He dodges the first tackle, pulls up, he's in trouble. But never quite as much as you think. And he is nailed by Harry Coleman, number 24. Eight yards after a 40-yard run. I, and I, like I say, he's not doing this. You know, you know, Vern made the call. Never as bad as you think. He just keeps moving. He doesn't look real fast, but how can you when you're 6'3", 245? But, boy, no one cuts him off on that one, do they? A gain of eight at second down and two, 435 to go. Florida has only one timeout remaining. Had to use a couple of them. A limb urging the crowd on. Handoff right side. It's uh, Emmanuel Moody, number 21. Al Woods. And LeVar Edwards, number 89. See, they did get enough to move the chain. So 4-13 to go, the clock running. I'll tell you, Deontay Thompson, we haven't seen in a while, did not play last week. The speed receiver is now in this football game. Look at the top of the screen. Yep, number six. Hamstring problems. He's only had two catches this season, but both have been for touchdowns. Tebow will throw. Got a man at the 50-yard line and down to the 48. It's Brandon James. Wow, this was beautiful. He wanted to go to the wide receiver, Riley Cooper, to the outside, but Patrick Peterson took it away. So Brandon James inside on the safety. That's easy pitch and catch. A lot of field there. The corner bites on Riley Cooper, and they take it right to the outside. And now it becomes very interesting. My favorite part of the game here, Vern, the end of the half and the beginning of the second half because Florida gets it again. It's the only sport I know of where you can score at the end of one half and get the ball to start the next half. Here's the option, the pitch back, Demps around the corner, gets a good block from Brandon James. It was a little screen block, but boy was it effective. Number 25 and a gain of 13. I mean, think about that. Uh, yeah. You know, when you, you know, in baseball, you score some runs, the other team gets the bat. But in this part of the football game, if Florida can have a successful drive here and put points up, they could score at the end of this half and get the ball again. Brandon James, number 25, middle of your screen. And to the outside, Deontay Thompson does a good job of getting the block. First down and 10. You know how frustrating it is not to circle? I mean, uh, I, don't, I can't yeah, the, circle. It's guys, not working. <laughs> America, the telestrator <laughs> is inoperative. First down and 10. Another guy. Look at this. Yes. And that surge goes across the 30 down to the 32. Chad Jones, number three. And you know that Urban Meyer and Steve Adazio have challenged this offensive line for Florida that says, hey, our leaders hurt. We say we're physical. Let's see if we can do it. This time, Maurice Hurd and Marcus Gilbert did a nice combo block. Another dive play. LSU's hanging. They're hanging, but they're giving up yards. Second down and four. Jeff Demps in the backfield. Tebow keeps it. And he's going to be short of the first down. 
by a couple. Drake Nevis, number 92, with the tackle. Now, I was out at practice Wednesday. Uh, Urban Meyer was kind enough to let me in. He kind of closed it up tight, and I don't blame him. He had a strategic advantage of keeping his quarterback quiet to everybody else. But he was not hit. It was the last day in pads, and Tebow was not hit for two weeks. You can see it's still, he's not in there lowering his shoulder like we normally see. And again on third and three, you normally expect to see right. him carry the ball. And even John Chavis said that's the toughest thing against playing Tebow. Tebow up the middle. Now that's vintage Tebow. Yep. And he's got the first down at the 24. <laughs> Chad Jones and Kelvin Shepard, number three and number 11. And, and just to give you an example of, of what a defensive coordinator has to face as he goes right in the linebacker, John Chavis, a longtime defensive coordinator in the SEC many years with Tennessee, said the toughest thing about Florida is when they get to third and two, it's almost a conceded first down. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy makes it almost 99% of the time. So you have to almost defend against third and short. First down and 10. Timeout. LSU, that's their second. So time called with 57 seconds to go before the break. Each team with one timeout remaining. Tim Brando in New York coming up with the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer Archie and I will get you caught up on all of today's action, including a triumphant return for Sam Bradford, 389 yards passing, and this touchdown en route to win over Baylor. Now back to Florida and LSU. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS provided by DirecTV. And time now for the answer to the... Yeah, let the blimp be slow. Let him go. And cue the duck. Last meeting between two top five teams, October 31st, Halloween night, 1959. LSU over Ole Miss. And one of the most memorable plays in the history of college football. Running hard at the 25, gets away from the match for the right at the 25, at the 35, at the 35, down the 50, then the 50, 45, 40. And the 75, he scores! Billy Cannon, 89 yards, and Billy Cannon now an orthodontist. Practicing at the Angola Prison, Angola, Louisiana. Now then, first and ten. Hernandez in the backfield. Hernandez is in the slot, I believe. Yep. Tebow back. Goes deep. He's got a man wide open. Backs up in the end zone. Riley Cooper, his roommate. Well, I'll tell you, that, that's about as easy as you can get beat at corner because he peeked into the backfield. Just that one step forward by Tebow in the corner to the outside of the field. Chris Hawkins bit one step and it was over. When you're playing man to man defense, you cannot peek. You have to have eye security on your man. Sturgis cuts it inside the left upright. Well, they've been roommates for a couple of years. Tim Tebow to Riley Cooper. Watch Chris Hawkins. Watch him peek in backfield. Oh, and he got grabbed by the jersey. Did he ever? Did you see that? <laughs> the little play by Cooper to throw Hawkins off balance was the reason that that separation came. Cooper, very big, grabbed Hawkins by the jersey. No excessive celebration penalty here. Riley Cooper on the right. Touchdown pass from his roommate Tim Tebow. They collaborated for one in the SEC title game last year in the come from behind win. And they break the tie here. Yeah, and, and Ellis, you cannot gamble unless they get a big kickoff here. You do not want to make another mistake. You got to get out of the half. You might throw a screen or something or a draw, but you can't force an interception here late. Trendon Holiday and Ron Brooks are the deep man. 
I, just, I keep thinking about what you said in, in football. Oh, yeah, it's the only sport. It's the only sport you can get the ball twice in a row. Oh, wow. Look Script at this. Pick. I'm surprised. At the 32. See, that puts the passing game back into it now at the 40-yard line. Let's go back. Well, I like to call it kind of the play behind the play. Little things. Let's absolve Chris Hawkins a little bit here. He was he was peaking, but it was actually oh. Riley Cooper. Watch him grab the jersey with his left hand. He yanks him. Hawkins gets thrown off balance, and then he's by him. It's almost, what was that, roller derby? Remember those old days? <laughs> I mean, if you get away with it, you get away with it. So Tebow with the touchdown toss. And the ball with 44 seconds to go before the break. First down and 10 at the 39. Here's Jefferson back. Wants to go deep left side. Has to freelance a little bit. Pump fake. Down the sidelines. Out of bounds to stop the clock. At the 43-yard line. Well, Tim Archie, Spencer Tillman in our New York Studios with the Geico Halftime Report. And that's coming up uh, 36 seconds. Uh, I, Game time today. I think Ellis, you can kick about a 55 yard field goal here. So that means they need to get to about the 38 yard line, maybe. Josh Jasper's best this year is 52. Okay. So they've got a ways I, I to I saw go. him working out yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday. He's the. World class speedster has a 10. Uh -oh. oh, did they throw the flag? Well, it was his shoulder pad, I believe, and it also was on the Florida bench. So it, it has to be exact here. Good point. Holiday, you reach out, and he grabs him by the dead. That's not a horse call. That's a good call. Good no call right there. Now they need what? Another. 10 yards, 12 yards. Mm, yeah, I'd say 12 to the 35. They got a timeout left. If they can get to the 35, it would equal his longest of the year, and that is yeah. yep. intercepted. Picked off by Joe Hayden. And, and Urban will end the half right here. He'll just take a knee. He gets the ball back. I'll tell you, Jordan Jefferson never set his feet on that throw, and that's why he wasn't accurate. Never set his feet. He's just lucky this happened on the other side of the 50. Watch him on this one. I was watching him all the way. Watch him. He keeps backing up as he throws the ball. Look at his foot almost, his left foot almost went backwards, and he did not get an accurate throw at all to the outside, trying to get it to Tolliver. Jefferson picked off, and uh, Joe Hayden gets his second interception of the season, and they're going to take a knee, as uh, you predicted, and the final 18 seconds. That's 17 straight games. Florida has intercepted a pass. That's right. That's it. Urban Meyer standing by with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, Coach. How would you assess how Tim has held up in this first half? I think he's done great. I think our offense line is playing okay. It's just two really good teams playing. But Tim, Tim's hanging in there and playing as hard as he normally does. A lot of called runs, but not so for Tim. Is that you being conservative with him? A little bit. You know, he keeps in my ear about, uh, but our, our backs are running hard. We're doing a decent job against a good defense, mixing up. We'll probably throw a little bit more in the second half, but uh, we're playing field position right now. We're, we're doing a decent job. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Tracy. LSU, the national champions three times, trail at the half. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. Okay, Vern, coming. Back to Baton Rouge, 10 3 Florida leads a moment ago. Tracy Wolfson with LSU head coach Les Miles. Coach, those dive plays, Florida has 114 rushing yards in that first half. How do you slow them down? Those little guys are squirting up in there. We need to tackle CRISPR. I mean, there's a bunch of missed tackles, contacts that were that were bounced off of and went down the field. We made that point at halftime. How do you get your run game going? 
Well, I think our run game, the, the sad thing is, is we haven't had the ball. We've had a nice drive. We just haven't had the ball. They, you know, Florida's offense has consumed the clock. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you, Tracy. By design, Gary. I, I think he's right on. Uh, you know, the only oh, each team only had four possessions in the first half. LSU feels they can move the ball by mixing it up, but that designed dive play has been a big, big difference in this football game. We get set for the start of the third. As Gary pointed out, Florida won the toss. He heard the option, so here is Josh Jasper's kick, and Brandon James drifts back and takes it two yards into the end zone, and he will run it out, but only as far as the 16-yard line. Well, the attendance just announced that 93,000 uh, 139 in the 85 year history of this uh, stadium. That's the largest bunch ever and we're privileged to be here. Yeah, and and they're they're waiting, you know, right yeah. now. I mean, they're loud, but they're waiting and, and Florida has controlled the game. I think Florida came in hoping they wouldn't have to use Tebow that much and they haven't. That's been the story of the first game. Imagine that both teams only had the ball four possessions in the first half. First down from the 16 yard line officially. Jeff Demps is back in the backfield with Tim Tebow. Right side, Demps, one yard. Yes. Jacob Cotrera, number 54. Gary, take us through the first half trims. Well, it should be pretty easy when you're able to take Timbo, Tim Tebow's, excuse me. Well, you know, they only have to throw the ball six times because they were able to move the ball without him. Jordan Jefferson's been okay. That last drive, you knew something bad was going to happen to it. But you look at that. 23 rushes, and most of them right up the middle. There's a movement along the line of scrimmage, and a flag is thrown, and one well, of the Pouncey twins, Marquis, no. says it's against them. John, what Tracy said before is what happened right there. Pouncey moved his head, and the nose tackle hit him. Okay, let's see the way it goes here. Quarter snap, ball start. Number 56 on the offense. That penalty is five yards for the previous. Tracy was right on on this one. Watch, Pouncey turn, and they put Josh Downs right on him. And he was told at halftime, when he turns his head, you hit him. Now, they did it on the first play, and they got away with it. But you watch, they're going to put someone right on the nose all the time. Let's see if Pouncey continues to do it. He needs to double up the head turn. He didn't do it no. that time, did he? Inside pitch. And that goes to Aaron Hernandez, the tight end. Now to the 21, it brings up a third down. Now that looks very small, but what it does now is it keeps the Florida offensive line from timing out the snap. Now they're sitting there a half second late. It should help the pass rush for LSU. Third and seven. Boy, those, the little things that you have to, you know, I mean, these coaches go crazy with these little things. And again, no head movement. Look at the pass Debo. rush now. See? See the Flag. difference? Yep. Yep. Big, big difference. The Florida offensive line does not know when it's going to be snapped. So they're just sitting there flat-footed. And LSU has a faster start than the line. Look at that. Will they get him the face mask? Yep, they are going to get a face mask on him inside that time. I think it was Levick's yeah. face mask on the defense. I'm almost sure it was Levingston, number 95. It was. Lazarius Levingston, number 95. It was, you know, the, the old penalty probably would have been a five-yarder. Now they don't have that. Incidental is a 15-yarder. It's fascinating, this snap, this head thing to Yes, me. it is. And again, Pouncey now. Let's see if he moves his head, because he's been doing it throughout the game until he got nailed which now brings the crowd back into the game because Florida's sitting there going to have to look in to see the ball snap. Tebow goes to his right, drills it, and the tackle is made in the open field by Jai Eugene, number four, 
a one time starting cornerback now relegated to backup duty but he got Deontay Thompson at the 40. Top of the field right here. This is called the smash route. The outside receiver goes down about five yards, stalls. The inside receiver runs a flag. Second down and three. They go right. Raheem Alem, number 84, makes the tackle on Tebow. Yeah, that was a called play for Tebow that time. Now we're in that third and short situation. Yep. You know, when I gave my scouting report on LSU all week, I said, you know, their back seven is as good as anybody in the country. What's different about LSU's defense than the last four years, they don't have those difference makers in the defensive line. And so far, they're getting blocked. Third and two. Officially one, and Tebow moves the chain. So Florida now three of five on third down conversions. This is the second time that Urban Meyer has called on Tim Tebow to carry it. Yep, that was a run all the way. That was not a read. That was a called play. I mean, just think it, it, this drive for the LSU defense is so huge because the last time the offense was really on the field, I mean, mm -hmm. the last drive, you know, the, you know, they, it was a tie game. They could be down 14 points when they enter the field again if Florida sticks it in. Les Miles prowling the sideline. By the way, by the way, you know all the noise two years ago about LSU folks getting Tim Tebow's cell phone number? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what happened on Thursday night? Les Miles started getting inundated with cell phone calls and text messages. The folks at Florida got hold of his number. First down and 10. Tebow looks deep. He'll run. And gets up near the 46-yard line. This will be close for a first down. Jeff Demps with a ball. Good coverage that time. It was a slot blitz coming from the outside that time. Harry Coleman, who plays that hybrid linebacker safety position. But Tebow seems to be managing himself. I wasn't sure if he'd be able to do that. Remember, we had him hurt a couple years ago against Georgia, right. where he had that shoulder and he could only play one way. This game, it looks like he's managing himself along with the play call. On second and short, he'll keep it again. Yeah. You know, I mean, Tr Tracy Wilson gets it from these coaches. Though. She gets the truth. <laughs> you know, he said, I'm going to use Tebow more. He's right? using yep. Tebow more. Gary, let's take a look at our Home Depot tools to victory. Well, Les Miles said it was the dive play and it was poor tackling. I beg to differ. I think that offensive line for Florida did an outstanding job blocking that front seven, the four linemen and the inside backers. And I think you got to give credit to that Florida offensive line. We always talk about the spread and the motion in Tebow. But those five guys up front are controlling the game. Here's Pouncey again. Over the ball, Tebow drops back, goes deep in the middle, has his tight end wide open. Hernandez to the 17-yard line before Perry Riley catches up with him. That's a 26-yard game. The most devastating play in Tim Tebow's arsenal is the fake run. He's run it a few times. This time he's going to step in on the tight end right down the hash. Four vertical, right down the hash. Tebow puts it, and it's exactly how you have to throw it. You don't want to lead him too much. Throw it right at his body, and Tim put it right on the mark on the hash. Boy, Steve Adazio is dialing him up right now. The new offensive coordinator, Dan Mullen, right now is going, boy, they don't miss me at all. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they're, they're doing fine. Chad Jones, the injured player, the safety. He kind of got rolled up, I think, on this one. Yeah, he did. Got a helmet right to the knee that time. I think it was Brandon Taylor's yes, helmet it was. got him right in the knee. So Chad Jones uh, down on the turf. We'll return in a moment. Chad Jones able to walk out without assistance. He's a two-sport star here at LSU. For more, let's go down to Tracy Wilson. 
That's right, Fern. We've mentioned how he was a relief pitcher, outfielder for the LSU National Championship baseball team. He's now won two NCAA championships, one in football and one in baseball. And he told us he actually likes baseball more than football. His baseball teammates call him Dreadlocks of Doom. And yes, they actually use that name. His other nickname, CJ3 and the Hybrid. He's also called Bro, that by his brother and teammate Raheem Alem, born Al Jones Jr. Vern. I'll let you tell that story. Okay, as we get time, Raheem <laughs> Alem uh, decided to change his name in 2006. Had nothing to do with his religious faith. It had to do with uh, honoring his African heritage. There's the pass, and it's completed the five. Hernandez in front of Jai Eugene. That's a 12 yard pickup, Gary. Five catches now for Hernandez. Well, not only that, that's a tight end running a route on a cover corner. I mean, well, look at this tight end. I mean, look at this route he runs. He sticks it, he turns, eh. He kind of fell away. Jai Eugene needs to do a better job. There's no way the tight end is going to run by you on the five yard line. That was an average route and poor coverage by Jai Eugene. Hernandez out of Bristol, Connecticut, had a brother who played at UConn. He thought about going there, lost his father unexpectedly. And here is the uh, run down to the three yard line. Hernandez's dad yes. passed away at the age of 49, coming out of surgery for a hernia. John Chavis. Yeah, and I know he knows that they got to have a stop. He, you know, he's been quoted as saying, and I, I agree. In the SEC, you must play man-to-man -man coverage because you must load the box and stop the run. They've tried to load the box. They have not been able to stop the run. Demps in motion. Tebow spins. It'll be third down. Now, remember we asked less, Vern. Remember we asked less. Are you going to play the jump pass? Right. Because they, you're not going to believe that Tebow's going to run it here. You got to play the jump pass, right? Now, second down is usually when you catch the jump pass. I was kind of expecting it there. They wouldn't dare do it here, would they? Oh, I don't know. They've done it four times in Tebow's career at Florida. The jump pass a play that goes back to the 50s. And each of the four times they have been successful. Once in the national championship game. Exactly. Nope, no jump pass. But there's a man open, a flutter ball. And it is incomplete. Hernandez couldn't hang on. He's claiming he got it and he got the score. Now, it can, it'll be replayed and it'll be challenged. Well, we got an official up in the box. Let's see if this ball was caught. Did it touch the ground? I think it did. Well, Hernandez says it didn't. Nope. It looked like the tip of the ball touched the ground. Yep, there you are. Well, you know what? I don't see enough to change it. I'll tell you that. Not at all. Nice quick call. And it's a 20 yard field of the goal attempt. There we just about had it. And now are they going? Yeah, delay a game. Not a huge penalty right here for a field goal. One more look. Let's see. Between his legs. Tough catch. Oh, yeah. Yep. Touches the grass. Burn. Gee, what a call. That's These old boys. <laughs> what a call, Burn. 25 yard field goal now for Sturgis. Make it a 10 point lead for the Gators. Up. No. What a difference. <laughs> Boy, he missed. He missed badly, didn't it? I don't even know if he was five yards closer if that one would have got in. That's about as bad as you can hook a ball. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by AT&T. Macy's Outback Steakhouse and by Nissan. That hook field goal 
brings the ball out to the 20 yard line aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Direct TV. See part of this uh, wonderful athletic comp complex here at LSU. And uh, now Red Lobster presents tonight's scholar athlete. It's Lyle hit a 3.3 grade point average in kinesiology and a three time SEB SEC academic honor roll member Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown tonight by donating a thousand dollars to LSU's general scholarship fund. That was an oh wow moment. That was a big play and a huge stop. For LSU, remember that drive continued because of the face mask penalty early in the drive on Tebow and almost cost them seven points. Bottom line, 13 plays, 76 yards, six and a half minutes, and no points. Jefferson caught from behind. Tackle is made by Justin Tretto, his first sack of the season and the first sack tonight. We talked about the small little things that can happen in football games and this time six sacks last week and this time Florida comes in and makes good coverage downfield and that's a coverage sack that time coverage sacks and Justin Tratto comes in there and that was a safety grab and a crossing route and there was nowhere to throw the ball loss of eight second down 18 midway through the third quarter 10 three after the missed 25 yard field goal Option Jefferson with the pitch. Nice tackle. Wow. Janoris Jenkins and Ahmad Black, numbers one and 35. Well, I'll tell you, LSU still obviously in this football game, 10 to 3, but they've got to find a way to get yards. And he's trying to dial up the option. That time Brandon Spikes didn't try to read it at all. He just attacked the quarterback. Holiday is in. It's third and 15. Holiday near side. This is the part that Jordan Jefferson is just not ready for. He does not have a lot of experience against this dynamic secondary package that Florida has. Florida brings only three defensively. Jefferson in trouble See, he down. Doesn't, he yep. doesn't have the experience for this. Sam Bradford struggled against this package. Jefferson. Jordan Jefferson has to be very careful in these long yard situations. You know, Florida's keeping them in the game a bit, just a bit. They've, you know, they missed a field goal. They passed up a 38-yard field goal to keep it a one-touchdown game. But look at that secondary. Look at that coverage across the board. Look at how they're spaced out, and then that pressure comes to the outside. I know that Florida defensive line saw the Georgia tape and said, if they can get them six, we can get them six. And so Derek Hilton comes on, fourth and 22. Brandon James inside the 50 yard line. This was high. And it backs James up to the 40 where he calls and takes a fair catch. 51 yards for Derek Helton, the junior college transfer. Gators get the ball back. Good field position and a seven point lead. Now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Thank you, Vern. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look at this shot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is a hit. You know, we talked about this game, so all seriousness. It's not for the shy. And you can see these hits. And that's, that's a lot black right there coming up and taking on Charles Scott. And if you don't want to take somebody on, you might as well go to the sideline. Ahmad Black, who had seven interceptions tied for the lead in the country last year, only won this time out. But what a defensive tackle that was. Best starting field position for the Gators tonight. Their own 41. Demps on the field. Here's Tebow. He's gone the distance. Every offensive snap tonight. Recall that he was not medically cleared to play in the game until noontime today because of the concussion. Demps. Kelvin Shepard with the tackle. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vern, let's keep it in the Sunshine State where Florida State, you got to think it's a very important game for Bobby Bowden tonight. They're up by a touchdown, and then Jonathan Dwyer set sail for Paul Johnson's triple option that would tie the game at 21. Elsewhere, Miami led by Ja'Cory Harris. Oregon State's Quizzy Rogers has four touchdowns. Back to you. 
All right, Tim, I think I heard Archie say this afternoon about Bobby Bowden, leave him alone. <laughs> Second down, four. 5.16 to go third quarter. Here's the dive play again. Look and, at that. Uh, how about that? The pile Moody. moved to the oh, north. I'll tell you, Emmanuel Moody did a great job that time. Talking about the little guy squeezing through, but that time the transfer from USC was had to earn his spot here. You know, Urban Meyer likes him, but he's fumbled a couple times and he's had to earn every carry here at Florida. And that's kind of how it is at Florida. If you're not ready to compete for playing time, you ain't playing. There's a lot of guys that want to play. Recall we told you that uh, Florida, whoops, headset problems. Maybe the same uh, telestrator thing. Yep, yep. going around. That's it. First down and 10. Tebow pulls it away from Moody, drills it low and complete. Great throw. Great throw. Right at Cooper. Well, we're almost halfway through the season now. The SEC East standings. South Carolina outlasted Kentucky today. They go to Alabama next week. Georgia got thumped today and a big win for Tennessee. And out west. Alabama rolled 6-0. LSU trying to keep pace with them. Auburn was uh, rudely treated. I think it's time to make the point that you know, this game, obviously a big game, but both of these teams, either one that loses, can control their own destiny. And I'm saying right now, a one-loss SEC champion will be in the national championship game. So I'm saying whoever loses this game, whether it's LSU or Florida, can win the rest and still end up playing for the national championship. You've not given uh, much heart to the non-BCS schools. Well, with that I think they're needed. They, they might pass some conference with one loss, but right. not this conference. No, no, no. I, I totally agree. I'm just trying to stir things up, <laughs> as if you needed my help. Well, Florida has other designs. They want to <laughs> win them all. Yes, they do. Right? And they've won 14 in a row coming in. What do you do here? Second and in inches. Go for it. Well, there's Tebow. He's going to run. Stiff arm. And it appears he has enough. Let's see. I'm not so sure. And Tebow on a keeper. Yeah. Well, that Shepard. time, Calvin Tebow. Shepard stayed home as a spy that time, looking for the quarterback draw, and he got it. You know, if, if they had a blitzed or brought everybody to the outside, that could have been a big play. And it will be third down. I think it just started sprinkling. I think we may have some raindrops. See if LSU defense can make a big play here. They made one goal line stand. Here's Tebow. Ah. He stuck it in there that time, didn't he? That's the first time he's lowered his head really and stuck it in there. We might bring the chain out on this one. Oh, Kelvin Shepherd, Shepherd again. Yeah. Well, he might be short now. Is it four down territory? Back to back plays by Shepherd. Mm hmm. I actually saw him at practice Thursday, Vern, and said, I got to hand it to you. You were outstanding against George. He was all over the football field. Moved into a starting spot. He can play all three positions. John Chavis was telling us yesterday he's one of the smart young men on this team. How about this? Well, now. No. You missed a field goal from 25 that would have given you a 10 point lead. You didn't go for a field goal and you went and you got stopped on a fourth down play and then you threw a bad pass for it could have been a touchdown. All right. Fourth and a foot, Tim Tebow. 315 to go. Under center. How about that? Trying to draw him offside. Play clock at eight, plenty of time. You got to be kidding me. The crowd loves it. How about that? I, he was I, never going to take the snap. I'm surprised, I have to say. Now, he's playing. Did he take a timeout on the sideline? Yes. So. Oh, they, there's, and there's also a flag down, Gary. 
but but it, the back judge doesn't know that the side judge called a timeout or not. So they might pick that flag up. The layup game. Offense number 15. A penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Fourth down. Urban's play into his defense. And now Les Miles has to look at that offense and say, guys, our defense is stopping them. Two huge drives. We need points. And so after the penalty is marked off, Chaz Henry comes on to punt. I'll never There's, forget Urban's faking a punt in that SEC championship. Remember that? Well, they're seven for seven on uh, fake punts for first downs. But this time, Chaz Henry pooches it. And it's taken by Chad Jones at the 14-yard line. I don't remember seeing Tim Tebow under center ever before. A suddenly misty Saturday night in Death Valley. Wait till you find out what Charlie's brother is doing to earn some extra money Monday on a new Two and a Half Men. Right here on CBS, America's most watched network. First and ten for the LSU Tigers. Seven point four to lead, but they're allowing LSU to hang on. Now, late arrival to the offensive group is Mitch Joseph, number 83, the tight end. You know, two guys that have been really quiet for LSU in this game so far: Richard Dixon, number 18, their ball catching tight end, and Russell Shepard, number 10. When are we going to see him? Here's Scott going left, breaks the tackle, and LaFell kind of impeded further progress. Well, how do you like the teams? What teams do you like who control their own team? Well, yeah, this is the way I like to look at it. It doesn't matter if you're first or second, but to me, undefeated SEC team, Florida, Alabama, LSU is the number one seed right now. Texas is the number two seed. But the number three seed is a one-loss SEC champion, and then a, a, a USC comes in. So USC basically needs the SEC to lose two games, I feel, to play in the national championship. On second and two, Scott, Charles Scott. comes left. Jay Howard, number six. So you see these five positions as... Uh, I, I think so, and I don't have Boise State there. I don't think they're going to pass Virginia Tech because Miami's doing well enough. But how does Virginia Tech ever pass a one-loss SEC team because they lost to Alabama? In the season opener in Atlanta. That is the first first down of this half for LSU. And again, they'll go with a double tight end set. Charles Scott is the running back. That is most effective outing of the season last week in the win at Georgia with 95 yards. This one, left side, out to the 30. That's a four-yard game. Teron Sanders, number 92, makes the tackle. Charles Scott has not rushed for 100 yards in a game this year. But it looks to me that Les Miles has said, we can run the ball, and we're going to keep running the ball. It's only 10-3 to 3 because of a couple circumstances. We can run and try to protect Jordan Jefferson and hit the big play a diff different way. Now Scott and Jefferson look over near side. Play clock at four. Blitz from the corner and a flag. Well, look at that blitz. Two receivers to the top of the screen and nobody covered them. Major right comes over late, but two receivers the out there. False start. False start. Number 53 on the offense. At Pillager is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Look at the two receivers to the top of the screen over here. One, two right there. Two of them. Watch the two guys out there standing alone on the play, and they aren't able to get it off. Mm. Well, the penalty, the seventh call, is on T. Bob Abair, his dad, Bobby. Of course, a longtime quarterback for both the uh, Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. T. Bob. A bear. Really Bob the third. And Ant started calling him T-Bob. Here we go. Another flag. Prime to the snap. False start. Number 68 on the offense. 
That penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Joe DeRossick. Well, we all met Joe last week in a little different circumstances, but Joe jumps off this time. Somebody somebody served this team bad bacon and eggs yeah. at the hotel in Duluth, Georgia last but, week. But you know, they fought through it. And they, well, they, they, because they were sick and they had to shuffle the guys around three or four different ways to get through that football game. We had a couple who left everything on the field. That's right. Or what all they had, they yeah. left on the field. Yeah. The fans do not like this looking at the bench calling a play. Interesting. Look at oh this. dear, they're not going to like this at all. Look at this. Very upset. What was it, the end of the quarter? Oh, end ah. of the quarter. Well, <laughs> it seems not to matter to some. <laughs> I still didn't like it. That's the end of the third quarter with our score 10-3 Florida. We'll return to Tiger Stadium right after this word from your local station. You know, when we realized we were America's oldest brewery, it was a proud moment for me. This was a business my family chose over 180 years ago. We're proud of being America's oldest brewery, but we couldn't have done it without our extended Yingling family, including our employees and our loyal customers. With over 180 years of family ownership, this truly is America's brewery. The swine flu threat grows. The local students with H1N1 after the game. Eleven hundred plus yards last season, 2008, and tonight 11 carries for 44 yards. Charles Scott still in quest of his first 100-yard game of this year. We begin the fourth at second down and 15 from the 20. Florida leads LSU 10-3. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson here at Tiger Stadium. Jefferson, four-man rush, pressure. They got him. The sack is made by Jermaine Cunningham. And that's the second sack tonight. Uh, impressions so far. Florida's defensive line can win games. When you have a defensive line, it's what separates this conference from other conferences. You know, the big teams in the other conferences have the defensive lines, but throughout this whole league, there's that type of talent. This Florida defensive line is a game changer. LSU's defensive line is not. You know, it's 10-3, Gary. I don't get a sense of sizzle in this no, game. No, absolutely not. Too many mistakes, too many penalties. It's not like it was two years ago. There's right. no doubt. This game does not have that intensity. Third down and 22. Jefferson back. That one short, caught. And Scott comes left. It's going to be fourth down. He's and that, knocked out of bounds. And that was a protect your quarterback. It's 10 to 3. We don't want an interception like Spikes had last year against this team. Right. Brandon Spikes had two last year in the big win, and one of them returned for a touchdown. This was basically conceding a punt on this one. They knew that Florida would be in a deep zone. They got too many athletes that run too well. They just did not want a turnover at this point of the game. So Derek Helton is on to punt after the pressure applied. There's Brandon Spikes. He is uh, the leader. He, he is defensively to Florida what Tebow is offensively. This one nice and high. Oh, boy. And it will go out of bounds. So see where they rule that it did cross the boundary. The referee will line it up from his angle. He was right behind the punter, and he'll stop the, the side judge. 41-yard punt, no return. And now, it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Well, Tim Tebow, medically cleared after the concussion, has played every offensive snap tonight. Four of six throwing the ball. He did throw a touchdown pass to Riley Cooper, his roommate. And that ties him for second most in SEC history. That's the difference in the game, that one. And here's Jefferson, the only interception tonight, Joe Hayden with that one. And then the pressure has been applied. Here's Jermaine Cunningham, gets Jefferson down. That's one of three sacks 
this evening. He was sacked six times last week in Georgia. I wonder if this game is going to be like last week. Remember, we went to the 57 mark, minute mark, and then all of a sudden we had 21 points right at the end of the game. Or will a Florida field goal ice this thing? Let's not uh, do discredit to Tebow. He has the most touchdowns. First down and 10. That one complete Deontay Thompson up at the 45 yard line. Second catch for Thompson tonight. And Patrick Peterson, number seven, makes the tackle. Made the tackle for the Tigers. Talk so much in the early season about the absence of Percy Harvin and Lewis Murphy. Thompson expected to step up and fill that void, but hamstring problems until tonight. Now Cooper is at the top of the screen to the left. Hernandez, number 81, is in the backfield. And here is the die play up the middle. Watch out. Here's Demps. Spin move, and the umpire got right in the middle of things. It's a dangerous position. Watch Aaron Hernandez. He gets so much credit as a receiver, but watch the job he does right here blocking on the ISO play. He comes in and fits on Katera right there. Beautiful job by the tight end. This is so interesting how this game is unfolding. Urban Meyer with all the reputation of the spread. He's running the dive, and the Michigan guy who played guard has got her throwing it all over the field. Here's Tebow. Oh boy, Demps just about broke it. Let's go to Tim Brando. Vern Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Vern, last year's Heisman runner-up Colt McCoy was in action tonight as his Longhorns beat Colorado 38 to 14. He was 32 of 39 for 265 yards. Other big performers from earlier in the day: Todd Reesing for the Fighting Manginos, 37 of 49 for 442, and Mark Ingram of Alabama, who I believe uh, is playing better than Florida right now, should be number one. Oh, do you have a vote, Tim? Second down. Doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, matter it doesn't. You're one. right. Demps caught from behind by Peterson. There is a no. He's going to be ruled yes. down by contact. No fumble. 14-yard gain. Again, right up the middle. You have to hand it to this offensive line. Steve Adazio has said we can block these guys, and they are blocking them. Tebow's not a big threat in the option game. Remember, he ran 21 options or zone reads against Kentucky. What is he, he had like six? You know, I mean, there's Steve Adazio, new coordinator and offensive line coach. Dan Mullen went over to Mississippi State head coach. It's a first down and 10. 10-3 ten still. Here's Tebow. He will run now. And he's at the 23 yard line. You know, Tim Tebow, Heisman Trophy winner two years ago as a sophomore, is on schedule. He'll graduate in December, and we've gotten to know him pretty well. I'm just smiling thinking about our conversation with him before the Tennessee game. What classes are you taking this fall? Because he's already got enough hours to graduate. He said, one course, it's a senior management course to be continued. Tuesdays. Tuesdays, during practice. And we said, you know, Matt Weiner took one course. It was ballroom dancing. And Tebow said, mine's not that tough. <laughs> Option. Pitch. Now he kept it. Kept it, just went right inside. What have you seen tonight from him? What you expected? I think he's managed the game. You know, he's different than he was a couple of years ago as a sophomore when he was just running all over the field and trying to hurt people on every run. He's managed his game. I think Florida has managed his hits. And LSU is playing right into their hand because they can't stop the simplest play. Now, the question here is, do you risk it? You're in field goal range right now. But you got a kicker who hooked one right, right from 25 yards. Rainey is split wide to the left. It's five wide. Here's the option and the inside pitch. And that's going to be a first down at the 18-yard line. Yeah, that's that shovel pass. Remember when they did it against Alabama in this situation, they needed it. This time they do it to the big tight end. 
He's like H-back tight end. Runs right through a tackle. Drake Nevis. That's a big man. He ran right through right there. Hernandez with six receptions for 70 yards now. And uh, there's a player down for LSU, LeVar Edwards, number 89. Looks like he's going to be able to trot off uh, on his own. Oh, right in the face. And then Edwards takes a knee to the helmet. Holy cow. First down and 10. Brandon James alongside Tebow. Dive play. James bounces it to the outside. James is the ball carrier. Down to the 15. Well, they have uh, squandered scoring chances as Florida. They so sure far. did. Remember, they eschewed the field goal. Is that right? Eschew. I like okay. that. Oh, very good. And they didn't make it on fourth down. Then they had a chance to put seven. Poor pass. No great catch. And then they missed the field goal. So they missed seven, and then they missed three right after. And it's a second down and eight. They're also chewing up time on the clock. We're under nine minutes to go. Remember a couple years ago, didn't Tebow throw a, throw a fourth quarter interception late that hurt him? Right. Will they do it now? It really looks like LSU is going to need a turnover or a defensive play or another missed field goal. <laughs> yes. Well, it's going to be third, and uh, let's see where they spot this. It's going to be third and ten. Chancey Aguirre made the tackle, number 87. Help from Josh Downs, number 77. And it is third and ten. Florida leading by seven. Field goal makes it a two-possession game. Will they keep it in the middle of the field? Receivers bunched bottom of the screen. Three are spread wide left. Here's T-Ball, corner rush. He steps up, breaks a tackle, and puts it in position at the 15. So I believe we'll see Caleb Sturgis. Now, he's the guy that missed last time out. He got his opportunity because the six-year senior kicker, Jonathan Phillips, hooked one earlier in the season. But it will be Sturgis. Interesting. That was not a called quarterback draw. That was a called pass. Well covered by the LSU defense. Sturgis, one of two tonight, missed from 25. Chaz Henry is the holder. That one is good. With 7.27 remaining in the ball game, Gators now lead by 10. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot, Chick-fil-A, Verizon Wireless and by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. 93,139, largest crowd ever to see a football game played in this venerable edifice. If you can use H2, yep. well, yeah, I can I'm not, use, I'm not challenging. I can, I'm I can done. go with that if it's I'm right. done. Okay. <laughs> Sturgis. Ron Brooks, number 13, comes left. Steps out of the tackle at the 15, comes down the sidelines. And uh, Joe Hayden hits him, but, I, uh, you know, Ron Brooks looked pretty good on him. Yeah, he did. Well, let's, let's talk about LSU's strategy. Here's the Gary Croton. He's got seven minutes to go. He can still use the run and the pass, but I think they have a, have a sense of getting up to the line of scrimmage. Not in a hurry up, but they must not, you know, they can't take a six-minute drive here. Right. Well, the Tigers' last loss here on Saturday night goes all the way back to 2002, they were thumped by an Alabama team. Here's the handoff, 32 in a row at home. Just run around the left side after the 38-yard line. That's a nice first down run by Charles Scott. 
They did lose a game at night at home, but that was on a Monday night in Tennessee. That was a game that had been postponed by Hurricane Rita. It was Les Miles' first game at Tiger Stadium at night in 05. Memorable. 13 to 3. Jefferson. That, nope, incomplete. And again, that Florida pass rush just enough where Jordan Jefferson says, they're coming at me and I can feel them coming at me, whether it's Dunlap or Howard or Cunningham or Brandon Spikes. He can feel the pressure almost on every play of guys coming in on him. LSU for the night, one of seven on third downs. You have to even think, is it four down territory could affect this play call right now? And off to Scott, short, only to the 39 yard line. He needs another yard. I mean, you got two possessions here. You almost have to go for it right here. Six and a half to go. I would think so. LSU for the season now. 0 for 5 on fourth downs. Florida counters with their heavy unit. Oh, they are taking their time to grab the right play here. 14 on the play clock. Now more substitutions defensively for Charlie Strong and the Florida Gators. Fourth down and one officially. Jefferson will throw. Maybe. My, my, my. Brandon Spikes. You know, such a key play. I don't think everyone was on the same page here. I don't know if the receivers knew the call because it just looked like to the top of the screen they were blocking almost. Could have got one deep down the sideline, maybe. He looks right, no one even close to open. By the time he comes back left, he can't get his eyes downfield. You have to throw the ball. And so the game made memorable two years ago here on Saturday night when LSU went for first downs on fourth down five times and converted all five tonight. Nada. And Les is going to have to use his timeouts right now. He can't let him take three minutes off the clock running and not even get the first down. Shepard and Riley, numbers 11 and 56 on this tackle. Well, how about this? I mean, this Florida performance tonight, not spectacular, but how about the word mature? Very Experienced. good. Experienced. Yeah. You know, they didn't have a lot of penalties. Only one sustained drive all game by LSU. No turnovers, protected their quarterback, gave the game plan to their offensive line, and they performed. It's second down and seven, and Tebow has gone every snap at quarterback after having been cleared medically by a plethora of doctors. And here's Tebow going oh, for the end zone. Cooper, is it good? Oh, it's man. picked off. Are you kidding? Jai Eugene. Jai Eugene. Wow. Riley Cooper had no idea he was going to get the football. That's the only thing Florida could not do. I mean, Jai Eugene never thought he's at the bottom of the screen here. Watch Riley Cooper run right by him. He doesn't have any idea he's going to get the football. And I don't know where Tim's throwing the ball. I just am complimenting him for a mature game plan. and. That play came out of nowhere. I thought they were going to run the ball in the middle three straight times. Ladies and gentlemen, hmm. tonight's attendance, 93,000. Well, we got to look at it. We got to see if his foot was in here. The largest crowd in the history of Tiger Stadium. Well, you heard the PA announcement. And here, now they're doing, Ben Oldham is our replay official tonight. I, I thought he had I thought he was, I thought it was good. Yep. Sure did. It, it appeared he got that left foot down. Jai Eugene. Well, that's not uh, going to be the defining replay. How about that? Tebow's second interception of the season. A shocking call. A yeah. shocking call in this situation. 
Now, Tim didn't help out the call. Terrible decision. You know, the call wasn't good. Yeah, he's clearly got his foot in. You sure. can see it. There's grass around it. You know, one of the things I heard. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a clean interception. First down. A great compliment I heard about Drew Brees is they said that Sean Payton feels like he can call any play because he knows if it's not there, Drew Brees will bail him out. This was a play where Tim Tebow could have bailed out the call, and he just threw it up for grabs. And a little look of exasperation on his face over on the sideline. And uh, here comes LSU, 95 yards away, a two-possession deficit. 4.55 to go. And the sophomore quarterback, Jordan Jefferson from the end zone. Caught ankle tackle. Wow. Janoris Jenkins. Now it comes to strategy for LSU is we got to have a touchdown. Now it doesn't matter what when we get the touchdown because we're thinking outside kick no matter what. On second down, here's Jefferson back across the middle. Caught. That's Dixon's first catch tonight. Well, that's the first time they've thrown to him tonight. I don't really understand that. He is money as a receiver. Great pass receiving tight end number 18, Richard Dixon. First down and 10 at the 20. They picked up 15 for 16 to go. And again, Jefferson has to dance out to the right, and he's going to be forced out of bounds. At the 26-yard line, Joe Hayden was there defending. Hayden, I remember last week, what did he go, 88 yards? Yeah. Burn. Yep, 13 plays. 6 of 11 tonight. He has been sacked three times. Well, if he does it against this defense, this, you know, I know defense, and this ain't no Georgia defense. <laughs> Duly noted. Second down. And they got spikes lined up at right defensive end now. Yeah, he does it a lot in nickel pass. Okay. Brandon Spikes, that pass is complete over the middle, and that's good for another first down. A.J. Joe Spikes with nine tackles tonight. And Florida is conceding yards for time right now. The big, tall, fast, wide receivers have not gotten deep in this game yet. Here's LaFell, one of them. And that is in Will Hill, number 10, defending it. Jefferson, a sophomore out of St. Rose, Louisiana, said it's very close to the New Orleans airport. He was actually at this game two years ago as a recruit, sat in the stands, wanted to come here, and then three weeks later, he went to the LSU-Alabama game and LSU won that, and he declared for LSU. Said Alabama, finished second. This one's good across the middle. And the chain will be moved, and the clock will be stopped because they'll have to reset it for the first down. Little screen pass. They're taking LSU exactly what they have. Florida's conceding the eight-yard pass, and so far the Tigers are taking it. Jefferson has got him the last pass. one. Yep, this one incomplete. Well, that time Trin and Holiday tried to run before he caught that one. This is Joe Hayden something. He really is. He's as solid a football player as you'll find in college football. Started as a true freshman, does not make a lot of mistakes. Vern said he played, look at that, Trin didn't try to throw the ball. Vern said he played quarterback. I think he's the oh, threw for over 7,000 yards yeah. as a high school quarterback. Yeah. And he was a starting point guard on the state champion basketball team two years in a row. Here's Jefferson. He's going to have to scoot out of bounds and stop the clock. Jefferson. Joe Hayden. Now last week, the winning drive. Go ahead, drive, and then they hit that last one before, but it was 88 yards. The big scramble by Jordan Jefferson set up the run by Charles Scott. And they wound up winning it against Georgia. Now third down with 3.02 to go. Another flag. 
And while we've got a moment, let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim Brando. Vern, a bizarre night, really, in Tallahassee. An hour, 20-minute lightning delay. But uh, Christian Ponder to Jermaine Thomas, his fourth touchdown pass of the half. That's a career high for him. 35-28 to 28, and a very important game for Bobby Bowden. Back to Vernon Gary. Third down. 13, Agreed, Tim. 43 yard line. And it's going to be third down. At three minutes to go. Jefferson. A catch up in the air. Incomplete. Thought it was a catch. Hayden was there to knock it away from Terrence Tolliver. Ball was again thrown a little high, and Joe Hayden had time to come in there and disrupt the receiver. If that ball's in the stomach, you might be able to catch it with your third hand, use your body to catch it. Tolliver, a sloppy route, sloppy route, didn't come back and help at all. You can't run sloppy routes against this Florida defense. You see him go across the line and just stall there. You have to go across and come back. And so fourth and 14 with 2.50 to go. Gators rush three. Jefferson in trouble. Dropped again at the 36 yard line. Well, he was, I thought he was dropped. Pardon me. He threw it forward to an offensive lineman. That'll be a penalty, and that should be ball game. Yeah, it should be. It was a nice catch by Lyle Hitt. How about this play? I mean, this is a complete team. Now, I, you know, it wasn't a pretty game, but to come in here, Willie. Number 65 recovered the fumble. There was not a pass, so therefore there's no flag on the foul. The line of the game was not made. First down. I thought he tossed it forward here to him. That was actually a fumble on the play. Oh, it was stripped out. You know, I wonder, one of the calls that's not happening anymore in college football doesn't mean a lot. Me, is forward progress. Wasn't forward progress there? I mean, they hung that player out to dry, but Florida's defense gave up some yards, but they didn't give up the football game. Nine, if this score holds up in the bayou. Back to Vern. All right, Tim, thank you. It's a first and ten now. And uh, the ball was spotted back at the 30 where the fumble occurred. Can't advance it on fourth down. So uh, Tim Tebow and the Gators have it. Here's Demps. That'll be a nice game and work on the clock. 2.31. There yes. you go. Kelvin Shepard. You know who we didn't see at all tonight? Russell, 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 Russell Shepard. Shepard. Russell Shepard. Not, not a, a play. down. They not told a down. us they want to get him eight to ten touches a game. Shepard. Clearly, the LSU had no explosive plays in this game. Now, you got to have some against this defense. They're too solid. Time call. Tim Tebow, Urban Meyer. That's a smile of satisfaction. Nice moment on the sideline as we left Tiger Stadium. Urban Meyer, the affection of a coach for his players. In that case, Tim Tebow, but uh, plenty to pass around as uh, Urban Meyer is going to win here as a head coach for the first time. He has been here before. He was on Earl Bruce's staff when they played at LSU in 1992, Colorado State, and Colorado State won that one 17 to 14. And there's uh, the handoff to Jeff Demps. Well, Tim Tebow almost went to Alabama, and he was uh, recruited by Mike Shula the same weekend that Brandon Spikes was there. And Spikes confirmed for us this week that the two of them sat in Shula's office, and Mike said, you know, if you guys come here, we can win a lot of championships. Well, ultimately, Brandon Spikes and Tebow wound up at Florida. He said, I'm going where he's going. There is not enough gumbo in Cajun country to erase the sting of a defeat. 13 to three player of the game Tim Tebow. He's one of our players of the game played every offensive snap and he is joined by Brandon Spikes 11 tackles two and a half sacks and it's third and short. Oh, it just strikes you watch this Florida team 
You can tell they're a champion. They can beat you big like they did Kentucky and score right. 50 points, but they can beat you small like they've done tonight with their defense. Here's Tebow. Oh, I don't understand this. <laughs> I they, thought you might take can, exception they, to that. They can beat you silly, too. And I, I, I don't get this one at all. I was at elbows going to say, I wonder if they would take him out and give him, you know, the basketball where you take the guy off and everybody claps for him and you yeah. bring the backup on. I, oh, well. Yep, first down. If he'd, if he'd got, well, I'm going to say if he'd have gotten, I will say it, if he'd have gotten dinged, I'd have been out of the booth. <laughs> We're back in Baton Rouge, and it's time for the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Here is Mick Huber of the Florida Gator Radio Network. Throw the gun, shotgun snap, play action. Drops back, looks to throw, fires deep for the end zone, wide open in quarantine, and Riley Cooper, touchdown! Oh, my! Riley Cooper in the right corner, and the Gators take the lead. That gave them a 10-3 lead. They've increased it to 13-3. Riley Cooper, who uh, signed a baseball contract with the Texas Rangers organization and spent the summer in Texas played minor league baseball. Handoff this time to Dimps. Gary, you uh, you found reason to well, not need run a, Tebow, right? Well, no, I don't. I don't see why. I mean, they need a first down. But watch Kelvin Shepard, number 11, to the right side of your screen, just barely misses a head-on-head -head collision with Tebow. Those helmets were inches apart. Now I defended Tebow being in the game against Kentucky last week, third quarter. They hadn't scored in a while. I thought after they scored in that drive, you'd have been out of the game anyway. That that call right there, I, I don't know if that's necessary. There's John Brantley, who uh, practiced with the first unit all of last week and uh, split the time with Tebow this week. John, the redshirt sophomore, did not get on the field tonight. Well, LSU, like I said, though, LSU in this football game is not done. I mean, they, they lose this game as a loss, right. but they still control their own destiny. It's not going to be easy destiny play at Ole Miss and at Alabama and then they have to beat Florida again to get there but you know still in their own hands there's the dive play left side LSU is out of timeouts we've got 85 seconds to go in this one well they won at Washington Vanderbilt at home Lafayette at home goal line stands both against Lafayette and at Mississippi State the big one last week and uh, they are idle next week. Then they've got Auburn and Tulane at home at Alabama. Non-conference Louisiana Tech. And then they finish up at Ole Miss and Arkansas. You just got to really love this league because, again, it became apparent, even though LSU was trying to hide Jordan Jefferson a, a bit, you can't beat a quality team in this conference without a quarterback. And then Jefferson... Only moderately effective tonight. 11 of 17 for 96 yards. Clock can't stop. Well, the Gators go back home against an Arkansas team that uh, won big today against Auburn. They had their idle week last week, and then they go at Mississippi State. That's been a trap game for them a couple of times. We'll see them against Georgia. And uh, then they wound up against at South, South Carolina, Florida International, and then Florida State. Final 14 seconds. Tim Tebow's got helmet hair. Well, Tim Tebow has everybody's respect in this yep. league. I never heard anybody say anything bad about him. The defensive players have so much respect for him on every team he's played against. And that carries over to the coaches, too. Les Miles, Gary Croton, John Chavis, the two coordinators at LSU, expressing their hope that he would be able to play tonight and their admiration for him. Well, Tim Tebow is standing by with Tracy Wolfs. Thanks, guys, Tim. After the hit, after the concussion, all the uncertainty to come on the road in an environment like this and get the win. I know it wasn't the biggest win for you, but the toughest? Uh, it was a tough win. Coming to this stadium, a great crowd, a very good team, great defense we're going against. It's a big win for us. 
How are you feeling, and did you have any problem out there whatsoever? I'm feeling great. The doctors did a great job. I just want to thank them for all the work they put in me the last two weeks, our trainers, and then all the fans that were praying for me, and everyone across the country was praying for me. I really appreciate it. For you, beating an undefeated LSU team today, what was the key to victory? I think it was just playing hard on both sides of the ball. You know, on offense, we didn't execute the best, but we played really hard. Our offensive line drove them off the ball all night. Backs ran hard, and guys competed all night for four quarters. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank Feel good. Thank you. God bless. All right, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tim Tebow. 13 to 3. The only touchdown of the night was a toss from Tim Tebow to his roommate, Riley Cooper. Urban Meyer wins at Tiger Stadium for the first time. And the Florida Gators win their 15th in a row. That's the longest in the country. For Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, I'm Bert Lundquist. See you next week.